we are going to use the Divi theme builder to create a beautiful template for our blog posts. And this is one example of uh, how it can look. We have the category, the blog post title, publish date dynamically. We have the featured image with a nice overlay and a nice divider shape in the bottom. Then we have the blog post content to the left with text and images and stuff. And to the right, we have our global sidebar. And if we browse down, we'll see related content that is populated dynamically. So let's jump into our development site and we can just have a look how a blog post looks by default in Divi. So it looks okay, but not too nice. So I think we can do far better than this. So we will add a global template in our theme builder by going to the WordPress dashboard. We go to Divi and the theme builder. And earlier we created a template for a global header and footer. So we'll add a new template for blog posts. So we will assign it to all posts. And now we will add a custom body since the header and footer is already inherited from the earlier global footer and header. So we click add custom body and we will build it from scratch. Or maybe not really from scratch though, because we are going to recycle some content. If you've seen the earlier chapters of this course, you know that I like to recycle things and save some time. So I'll choose clone existing page. And we will use our news page because we already have the sidebar and the header and some stuff there that we can work on. So I'll start by just deleting this blog post uh, module or sorry the blog module and uh, we'll start by adapting the header and now we are going to work with dynamic content since all posts are different we won't have a static image up here or a static title we will fetch that dynamically from every individual post so let's start here by the um, background image i'll go to the section settings and background and I'll go to the background image and simply delete it. And now I will add a dynamic content by clicking the small icon to the top right corner. And now I say that this area should display the featured image as a background image. And now it's just a dumb image, but this way it will dynamically show this post's featured image as the background image up there. So really simple. Okay, and we want to have the blog title. Uh, we want to have the blog post um, category up here. So let's create a new text module that will be filled with dynamic content. So first off, let's add our blog category, blog post category. So I'll click the dynamic content icon and let's display the post category. And we can have text before and after the category, but that's not needed here. And if you have several categories, you can have a divider between them. And we want to show the taxonomy type or category type categories. You can also display tags here if you want to. And if you have other custom uh, taxonomies, but we'll go for the categories. And I will actually use, use the this font, which is the H4, the heading 4. So we'll add a little bit of HTML here. We have bracket and H4. And then you see that it's already styled like I, I like our heading 4. And then I will end it by having this closing tag, H4. Nice. And now we want the dynamic heading. So I'll just add, add another text module below this. And uh, I click the dynamic content icon and we'll have the post slash archive title. This will be the title for the post that's displayed here. Okay, let's add some HTML here as well. This should be an H1, a heading one. 
and we want to close the heading one like that. And now we want this one to be white. So I go to the design tab, heading text. And for the heading one, I want it to be white. Now let's switch order. So this one is above this one. And now we can delete this old template here. Looks pretty good, I think. And actually, if I look at the design here, the category should be on top, the post name, and then the publish date. So let's rearrange it again. So we put this one on top, like that. And we'll fix this um, spacing just by a little bit of dragging, like that. And now we will add the dynamic publish date here when the post was published. So I click plus and we add another text module. And uh, we click the dynamic content icon and we choose publish date. There we have it, post publish date. Nice. And uh, we really don't need any HTML in this one. We can change the date format if we would like to, to something else here. But let's keep the default one. I go to the design tab, text, because this is regular text. And I want it to be white. And I want to have a smaller size, maybe 50. Maybe even smaller. Maybe 14. That's good. Uh, let's add some letter spacing and maybe we'll have it in bold. So you can just play around with these settings if you like to. Okay, so we're actually going to add some text before our published date. So before it should said, say published, colon and space. So there we have it. Looks pretty neat. So let's close this one. And uh, let's reduce some space here by just dragging this one up. Nice. Okay, so we have our heading for our header. So let's include this post content because the sidebar is already here. So we can keep that as is. So to add the post content, we will add a new module called post content. And now we have kind of a template that we can build here. We can say how should the different heading levels look, the text, the images, etc., etc. And this will style all the blog posts made in Gutenberg or, or the classic builder. So we'll go to the design tab and uh, we can use this. It's very effect effective. So the heading one we already have up here, so we don't need to use any H1s in the post content. So we'll start by post content two. And the heading font that we will use is Cormorant Garamond. So let's use that one. And the sizing there, we can reuse what we had in the text module before. So 42 pixels for desktop will look nice. And I think it was 32 for tablet maybe, yes, and for mobile 26. And let's change the line height to 1.1. Okay, we go on with the post content heading 3. And uh, there we also have the Cormorant Garmond font, but here we want to have it bold. And uh, let's see, 24 pixels for desktop. And for iPad or tablet, we use 22 and 21 for mobile. So that looks pretty nice too, I think. And let's see, we have a smaller font, so we should increase the line height a little bit. So 1.3 is good if you have line breaks in your headings. Good. And you could also add an H4, H5, H6, etc. in the same manner. Then we are going to st style our body, body copy. So that's text. And we use the font Carla. There we go. And uh, let's have 17 as the font size there. And uh, 
Let's do the mobile styling for mobile. We'll use 16, maybe. Oops, was too slow. 16. And tablet will just keep uh, 17 as on desktop. Okay. And uh, we can keep on designing stuff like the um, image. If you would like to have all images in blog posts to be, for example, rounded uh, edges, you could just type a value here and all images will be rounded. Or you can add border width or shadows to all your images in blog posts. We can check out a few more options here. I would like to have uh, not baby blue links. I want them to be golden. So let's go back to the text settings. We click the link settings here of the link style and it will inherit the font from the regular text but the color of link should be gold so here we can see the preview and this will also of course affect uh, the settings in desktop and tablet and this is a nice classic format in wordpress it's the block quote and uh, you can style it here in the div builder so we can change the text color Nope, sorry. I would like to change the block quote font here or the font weight. I can change the text color if I like to, but I could also change this blue one. That's was what I was looking for. Ah, there it is. They had hidden it down there. So I can do it like that and maybe we can style it to be italic and maybe a little bit bigger like that. And we have a nice block quote. Also, you can fix the bullet lists and the numbered lists. So here we have the bullets, so I can uh, actually change this to maybe golden or so, but we keep it as is, but I want to have square uh, instead of disks like that. So we can be consistent. Yeah, and you can do all the styling that you can do in a regular text module here. So there is one more thing to add in our blog post template and that's related posts. And this is really easy to achieve with the Divi theme builder. So we head back to the theme builder and let's add a new row below the other one. And it's a one column row. And we'll add the blog module that we used on the homepage earlier in this tutorial. And I want to display the latest three posts and we have the grid design already. If you don't, go to design layout and choose grid. And I only want to display the latest three posts here. Okay, so this is an important setting because this is a smart dynamic feature. So it will never recommend the same post that you are reading right now when you build it like this in the Divi theme builder but you can choose to display recommendations from all your categories. And this is default if you don't click anything here. So that's what's happening right now. But you can also choose current category. And that means that you will only display related posts from the category that you are now reading. So if I'm reading a post in the category inspiration, I will only see recommendations from the category inspiration here and vice versa. So it's up to you how you want to organize it. Uh, I don't even have three more than three posts in, in every category. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And we can just have a little bit of a shorter excerpt there, I think. Maybe like 120. Looks better. And since we styled this grid before, it looks nice with the shadow and we have a hover effect also that will be visible in front end. We can just make one final uh, change to this row and that's to make the spacing a little bit more narrow. So I go to the design settings, sizing, use custom gather width and we reduce that from 3 to 2. So now it looks good and consistent. Okay, so this is our blog post template. Let's see how it looks in real life. So I save this, exit. And since this was the first time I edited this particular template, I have to click save changes again here. It's an easy thing to forget. So now I click visit site. 
and let's go to news and let's click one post here okay so we can see that the correct feature image is displayed here you could see it also here in the list that this is the nice couch with the pillows and if i click here that's what's shown in the uh, top area we have the category case we have the correct title and the publish date if we browse down i can see the content from this post in this nice design with the sidebar and I can also see related posts and I see it from all categories since that was what I choose. So this is how you create a nice blog post template with the Divi theme builder. Mm -hmm.